Hey guys, Spectre here. Welcome back to some more Total War Warhammer 3. Continuing our Warfric campaign. Um, we are on the move now though. We've got Throg defending the homeland. And um, Warfric's going to go off on a sacking spree. And once I think I've got enough money in there, I'm going to recruit a third army. And, um, or in fact actually, well, first I'll give Throg a proper army, I think. I'll recruit a lord. And I'll just stick all the units that Throg's not keeping into that third Lord's army. And then I will... Um... Get Throg a, a fully flushed out army and send him off sacking as well. But what I will do with Throg is... I'll send it to a different location than Wolfric. He'll go somewhere else and create a nuisance. Because what do we need on this really? We need to... Well, basically, in this case, sack in my case. It'd be sack and occupy or whatever. Um, we need to sack 35 sons. We've done 22 already. So I'm only another 12 or 13. 13. Um, but we need to get the level of allegiance to with any god. So I need to get this up. And that is by basically raising them to a god. It gives you some points into that. But I need to get to an area where I can do that, but away from home. Essentially. I don't know why, but whenever he, whenever he is on the map, it always goes to where he is. But he doesn't do it with any other faction. Even when you've got it on fast forward. Because with this being on the fast forward option, it shouldn't go to any faction. It should stay where you leave the camera. But it traverses to his armies as though you've not got it on. The question is, I'm not sure if it's gone past Kislev already, is Kislev going to attack me? Because it might be Katarin who might attack me. Unless it's already gone past her. I think it's gone past her. that way and then we're looking to come down this way well there's Altharium so here's where we need to be careful because if he declares war on us and is in a port it can charge out of the port to his full movement and attack us As can that person from there as well. The eternal challenger. No problem. What you have is impossible. Probably need to get out of that stance as well. Probably need to go into the normal stance. Getting through here isn't about speed, it's about being careful. Throggy's leveled up. Alright. Oh, yes. Spawn of Chaos, so he's given 150 experience a turn. On top of that, 75, so we've got 225 right there. And then obviously now with how he works, he gives you percent more experience instead. I'm not actually sure if that's better yet. I've not done in-depth testing. Something I should probably look at though.
Does he, in he increase his income, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Right, in which case, we need to send you... Down here. Is it province or region? Region. Right, okay. So it needs to go to either one of these, basically. That one, probably, because it's, it's giving more. It's just so, basically, um... It's got those two. It's got that one which we don't need as much at the moment. Or any more, maybe. Uh, that one gives 15% more income from buildings in local region. So you might as well be sat in a region with a port where you can make the most money from. So that's where you're going to get your bulk your income. There's no good in being sat up here. So they're coming back for that again. What they don't know is that I've obviously traded him this. Which, funnily enough, trading him that fenton and getting wiped out because he hasn't got that. So, at least, if they lose this, he's recruiting an army there and sending it back over. Although, the thing is still raining him for 545. He wouldn't have any money, I don't think. Oh, no, because he's worth 860. I'm just leaving Frog there in case he declares war on us. So I'll just go and smash Balthazar Gelt's army. Right. Let's see what these do. But I think it's going to hijack my camera into it. Why don't we do it this time? I didn't check on uh, Katarin. Fuck. It's not massively important, I suppose. Masters have surely fated this meeting. No. Stop asking me to join war against the Empire. I join war against the Empire when it's correct time to do so. I don't need Empire sending fucking dozens of armies over to shores. And it becoming a problem. It's not what I need. Right, I need to get you out of that. This is purely in case he's attacked. My units aren't fighting tired. Right, there's that army, but that army I don't deem a threat. Eltharians could be. Oh shit. Bugger. Why weren't they visible to my scout? They can't beat me though anyway. To the four corners. If they both attack them together, then yeah, they can. I guide the tribe. Point the way to war. Yes, yes, go ahead. No well, most long's not going to attack us, so I'm going to worry about that. He can see that himself. Right, leave him there. I just need him to be ahead of my army, but I need to be able to see things like that because they've come into the water. Right, Archeon's back here. Katarin's moved there. Got this dude here, there's another army there. Fucking hell, she's got armies everywhere. He's retaken that, good. Good, good. Don't let her keep these things, we need to push her back. She needs to be out of your territory, not further into it. But he needs to start recruiting better armies like this. That's not a bad army. That army's dog shit.
He became regional power in this guy, yeah. So if I off the train war. If the Jain war against both, I can get it for free. Although he's quite far away from me. He's got trade with Kolek. Like. Right, let's see if we can make it through the Bretonian and Elven streaks. Ah, bollocks, I forgot to move him. I need to keep a sharp eye over there, because if Archon takes that town... I want to trade Krakodactrum straight away. If I can then lose it to Katarin or Kostaltin, it's his own fault. He can fuck around reclaiming it. I'm not. I'm just going to use it as a bartering chip to get like a defensive alliance for free. Because he'll want that city, being that it's a dark fortress. Fucking hell. Alright, retreat from that. We win it anyway, apparently, but we lose fucking almost everything. Fucking hell. I'm spending time recruiting all that. Right. I want to say it's that one. The only reason I'm doing this is my hero, where he was positioned, should have been able to see that army in the water. So because he couldn't see the army in the water, they've then used a port to force March an army to reinforce that one. Now I can still beat them in auto-resolve, but I'm not going to lose all those units. And I'm not fighting a massive plong battle against all that bollocks. I really am not. It would take an entire video to beat the goddamn thing. And I can't be arsed with that. I really can't. So right. Let's just get you down here. Where is my fucking hero? At this time, you want to be stinged where we can see line of sight. I don't know why he couldn't see them. He was only there. How can he not see here? One of the most important things for him to see, and he couldn't see it. All I needed him to do was just see the army. That's it. Nothing else. I just needed him to see the army. Because he couldn't see the army, the scout let me down. But I, f I feel that the scout's vision range should have seen there. His vision range is further than that. And see, that, that's why you need to scout ahead of your army. But apparently I'd scouted too far ahead. But I'm not fighting a battle like that and having to go for all that bollocks. For the sake of a scout being maybe a fraction of an inch out of range. Fuck that. I've got more respect for my time. Why 
why does he insist on going around that way when I just told him to where to fucking move? I hate it when they do that. Right. Move here. Then. So I don't want to move him too far this time. Because if that army's coming out here, I need to see them. And it wasn't this army that attacked. So there's another army nearby that force marched out and was able to get not only in attack range, but in attack range twice. Which is complete shit, in all honesty. Throg gets his point. And this is why, really, this is why you should make manual saves. And why you should have option to do one in Legendary. Because then it would make it more playable. Auto saves aren't good enough. They're not. And not when you can't choose when it auto saves. Because then you've got to refight all battles or things like that. Like a slight difference between this hero being here and being here. And then he couldn't see an army that had moved here. If I knew the army there, I wouldn't have moved there. But at that point it was already too fucking late. Now I could try and skip the Bretonian coast, but this strait here, the Bretonian and High Elf strait, is a nightmare for evil factions to get through. If an evil faction owns it on one side, then you're okay because you can skirt their side and you can avoid it. But if it's not an evil faction that owns it, it's dicey. Because obviously as well, you cannot be at war with the elves like I'm not, but they can still declare war upon you. And then just come straight out of a port city or town and attack you with multiple armies. But you've got to get through there to get to where you want to be sacking wise. Unless you want to go and sack the high elves. But I personally don't fuck around with the high elves because they become annoying. And they come then back over to Norsk with loads of armies. You might end up at war with elves at some point anyway. But when it's not because you're attacking them. They might not send armies over there. Or might not send as many armies. Because then it's not you that's like their primary threat. With my soul. Mm. Then your regional power, Nicky Doric, great, awesome. Right, so Archeon's here. If Archeon takes this, I can trade him that straight away. So come on, Archeon. Right. So there they So Wow, his vision range is really small. So from there to there, I couldn't see this. Right, we need to get out of that. So where's this other army come from then? There. I am a lord of Fucking hell, he's got a right range on him. Then again, he's only hitting reinforcement range, isn't he? Who are Bretonians at Warwick? Where are they going? Or are they just going to make sure I can't skirt past them? King Lewin Leonke. <laughs> uh... They're actually going to make sure that I, I can't skirt past them. That's what they're doing. So they're moving this army over here so I can't try and skirt down this side past the elves. They're trying to make sure they'll get me on this street. So right, because that's his movement range. That's his max movement range. This will achieve nothing. He can move so fucking far, it's ridiculous. I must keep my holy if I moved here... Bit further. You me. You take me for a right, because he can reinforce to here. They can attack me from there. I might have to move a little bit further this way. Because what I want them to do, I want them to attack. But I want to be able to retreat and only fight that one army. Then I can kill that one army, either in a battle or in an auto-resolve. 
and then I can leg it away. I can't believe how short the vision range is. What's his trade? Oh, he's got that one instead. Right, see, so ideally, you want campaign line of sight on your scouts because the campaign line around on these scouts is crap. I feel that's a lot smaller than other heroes, though. Like that one. So you need something like that. Because what's he got? He's got minus three in the leadership. Kazrax there. He's back, is he? As long as it doesn't stop being a nuisance, so I've got to actually kill him or something. I'm fine. Right. And let's do Scout 3 on him. Because he's got a good trait for it. There is one that normally gives you like, I think it's 10 or 15% campaign line of sight. But I'm not sure if the Norse can get that one. Send him down this way. It's no good in being up here. Be good if they could get something off of this that'd give them like more campaign line of sight or something. There's campaign movement range there. Has he got that one? Yeah, he has. Right. See what they do. Because they might go for the attack, they might not. Or they might um, just bring both the armies together and then try and attack me on the next turn. But I should be able to get out of their attack range. I, mean, I can fight them both if it comes down to it, but well, I won't lose as many units as the auto resolves that I'd lose. I, will, I might lose some units, and then that means I've got to go back and recruit yet more fucking units, which further slows me down. Alright, so what did they choose to do? Right, that's her. There's Edelhard. Right, so he is no longer a threat. He cannot threaten us. Shit. move forever. Why is there a Bretonian army over here? So there's one there and one there. Why are Bretonians heading over to Wolfwan? So what's going to happen is next turn, they're going to move here. She's going to attack me. I'm going to retreat this way, but they're still going to attack me again a second time because she's got movement range down to fucking here. And then he's got movement range fucking forever. So we're going to have the same problem again, aren't we? Unless... 
can load that instead so we're going to go back as many turns because it's only last turn so there's a Bretonian army on my far left and my right so many Bretonian armies I see I'm, I'm trying to do this without pissing off the elves because if I jump onto Orthwan to get the past the Bretonians while I'm trespassing their territory they're likely to declare war on me if I just go through the water I don't trespass on their territory so they probably won't declare war on me I don't care for this order. so basically this one gets recruited to a full army and she comes to here he fucks off up there and she goes over to Alicia for some fucking reason I move there. So it's fucking stupid, I'll be honest. Right, then what we'll do is then we'll just move him four distance. Fuck it, we'll just go this way. Because then he can see that part as well. She can attack if she wants to, but she's not getting supported by these. That's what I want. I want a fair fight. I'm not looking to get 2v1 like the AI likes to do all the fucking time. They love doing that shit. It's so annoying. The Bretonians aren't at war with the High Elves. They're not allies with the High Elves. So why is she going over to Orthwan? I've got no idea. Absolutely none. See, normally when the AI moves in certain locations, they do it for some sort of purpose. Either to set up an attack, defend a settlement, something. They usually have a purpose to something they're doing. Except the pirates in the ocean. So her moving there, or she plans on declaring war on the high elves, makes no sense. Absolutely none. And that way we avoid being attacked. Looks like Archeon got killed again. Looks like he got jumped on by Katerin and that other person. So he wasn't able to take that. And if this guy takes it, I don't think I can trade it to Archeon. Even though he's one of Archeon's vassals, I don't think I can trade it to Archeon. Ah, shit. Because Stalton's coming for my stuff. These aren't as well defended as cities. They're very unlikely to beat a 20 stack army, even if it's a bad one. Or 19 stack. Yeah, I'm not going to beat that. But I don't really need that stuff down there. I'm, I'm prepared to defend Nag Naglafari Plains, whatever it's called. I'm prepared to defend the Varg camp. I don't really care too much about Bear Blades either. If need be, they can take that. Let's move Kaj down here. Right. So where have the fucking Bretonians gone to this time? Right, there's Inez. Where the fuck is Clements? Where is the bitch? I think my entire army's got friends anyway. I don't know where she is, which bothers me. Where is she? Make 
a train skirt down here. Just hope to God that I get lucky. Because that's in his dragon team, and there was Clements. And then Adel, well, oh, she's there. So she's gone straight past me and marched jumps that direction. Right, okay. He's on land and not near a port, so he can't do shit. Because that means he's going to come out as far as here. If she wants to beeline it back, she'll get to there. She can't take me by herself. She's got a very bad army because she's got five artillery, which is far too many. Etonians, when they've got the ability, should be recruiting artillery. Because again, these are classed as peasant units. When they've got this little weird hat, they're a peasant unit. You only want knights. Your peasants are for your economy. They're for keeping your farms running. If you're building armies of peasants in them, you're recruiting the wrong units and playing Bretonians the wrong way. Bretonians are all like knights. Think of them as like the Warhammer World version of Rohan, but these are heavily armoured knights. These are like medieval knights. The Bretonians are more like medium cavalry than heavy cavalry. Yeah, I'm not beating that. Oh, fucking Christ, he's got those things. Yeah, no chance. I take my losses where they're due, but not when they're avoidable. And not when it's just a matter of the AI being in really, really strange fucking locations for no apparent Let's reason. Terms. Right with it. Oh, yes. All right. I actually don't even need Cracker Drack. I was going to save it to trade it to Archeon so we'd got a beachhead over here. Which I probably still might do. But I could then use it to get a military alliance rather than defensive. That's what I want. Because there's five more military attacking defense in our boys. Was he not well with them? Okay, fair enough. I can't. Because I ain't got a thing with him. In fact, no, he's giving defensive alliance. But. Right, Anchor, but we can check out what Archeon's got, can't we? So he's got Malofex there. He's got Cormac there. That's then that guy's. So he's got Howling Citadel. It's a dark fortress. He's got the Writhing Fortress. Which has got another guy in it, Urkathal. He has got the Plains of Zambaijin. So he's, he's got... I think he's got three tier 5 cities. Still got a stupid growth building in him though. Moron. Yeah, he just built the last few buildings in them. This is going to get fucked if he don't get out of there. The amount of fucking Kislev armors in this area, Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, five. She's technically six one down there with Cost Dalton. Seven. There's a right fuck storm room. Eight. My god. Right, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll still try and hold this. I'm upgrading it, it's upgraded in one turn, so I can upgrade the defences a little bit. I'll try and hold it. If one of Archeon's armies can take this or this, I can trade him. And then he's got a beachhead. Because Azazel doesn't really need it. Azazel's got this here. 
and that's now tier 5. And they've even got Infernal God in their garrison. Jesus Christ. That actually makes their garrison even stronger than before. If if that army attacks this, that army loses. That won't be that. If if it gives Kislev the auto resolve on that, that's bullshit. Because that armor would not lose that. That garrison's fucking terrifying. Right. Before we move, let's move in. I'm not worried by the army, but it's not. It's not the army you see that kills you. It's the one that you don't. You've got to be careful of these as well. Because if these guys see your armies in the ocean, these pirates, they will attack you. I just want to sneak past here and then bring him over to like here somewhere if I can. Once he's past it, we're golden. Then he can start his sacking and fucking raising spree. But if I get Throg with a viable army, Throg's going to go a different direction. Throg's not going to be going through the same straight he's going to go round all from the far side now there's still a straight there which is annoying this this part here is quite narrow but this where it widens out so if you get make it past here you can always deviate to this side and this is either going to be controlled by marathi or by mazda Mundi. so and even then he's not guaranteed to declare one you straight away so you can always like move zigzag out and then go somewhere you ain't got to worry about sea attrition because your armies are immune to it even storm attrition don't affect you so at least you ain't got to worry about stuff like that otherwise traversing the seas as nose comes would be a lot more problematic right so we're almost through the fucking Bretonian high elf strait so we'll resume this part next time i hope you guys have enjoyed if you have leave a like if you're new here, please subscribe the playlist link in top of the description and i'll catch you guys all in the next video take care everyone and have a great day